spoken by the prophet in the manner they have put forth. It is simply false. That is all there is to it, unquote. Apostle Bruce R. McConkie agreed with Joseph F. Smith's assessment some 50 years later. In the pages of his widely circulated work, Mormon Doctrine, McConkie characterized the White Horse prophecy as, quote, a false and deceptive document that has cropped up again and again for over a century. In a second work entitled, How to Start a Cult, McConkie further denounced the prophecy as, quote, a spurious bit of prophetic imagery that refuses to die out among sensation seekers. In fact, the White Horse prophecy has never been accepted as verifiable binding prophecy by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In the words of Mormon author George Kobabe, the prophecy, quote, has been soundly denounced. No authority of the church has ever spoken its support of this document, not once. And as Kobabe further notes, the credibility of the text is suspect from the very first. It was never corroborated by the prophet, and he never confirmed that the text correctly transmitted what he said or intended. Also dismissing the prophecy's legitimacy is LDS scholar Donald Penrod, who has produced a textual analysis of the entire document. Even apocalyptically oriented LDS writer Duane S. Crowther, inclined to accept much of the prophecy, offers an ambiguous assessment. Quote, while it is impossible to say with certainty that the prophecy is valid and that it was made by Joseph Smith, the overwhelming weight of the evidence causes me to be of that opinion. But, then Crowther concludes, quote, until positive proof can be obtained, this author feels that the White Horse prophecy should be used with care and discretion, unquote. Despite all such fundamental doubts and questions, three different Latter-day Saint presidential candidates were compelled to confront questions relative to the White Horse prophecy during the course of their campaigns. George Romney was asked in a 1967 dialogue interview his quote, interpretations of the Constitution hanging by a thread, and whether such a condition is present now or will be in the foreseeable future. Romney then th replied that Brigham Young, in quoting the words of the prophet Joseph Smith, meant that sometime the question of whether we are going to proceed on the basis of the Constitution would arise. And at, that, at this point, government leaders who were Mormons would be involved in answering the question, that question, unquote. The Elder Romney then concluded, quote, I, th I think it is increasingly straining, I think that we are increasingly straining the Constitution and that constitutional government in this country is increasingly in jeopardy. You have to remember that he, this was occurring uh, in, in the midst of the turbulent 1960s. Looking back on his father's 1968 presidential campaign, uh, Mitt Romney said of the prophecy and of, his, of the elder Romney, quote, it came up in the race, but he, my father, did not believe in it. That is the prophecy. Some 32 years later, in 1999, Senator Orrin Hatch likewise found himself confronted with the White House prophecy during his unsuccessful campaign for the 2000 Republican presidential nomination. On a, on, upon announcing his decision to run in June 1999, Hatch was asked if he had received a divine nudge to run, allegedly inspired by the White Horse prophecy. Hatch vehemently refuted such speculation, replying in his characteristically blunt style, quote, if I had a revelation, I'd tell you 
I've never spoken to God. I'd be doggone pissed off if anyone said that, unquote. <laughs> However, some five months later, in November 1999, Hatch appeared to allude directly to the prophecy in complaining that the, quote, Democrats' political correctness will be the ruin of the country. Hatch went on to state that the Democrats, quote, tolerate everything that is bad, and they are intolerant of everything that is good. Religious freedom is going down the drain. I have never seen it worse than this, when the Constitution literally is hanging by a thread, unquote. You have to remember this all came in the context in the wake of Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton, so you can see where he got a little bit worked up over that. <laughs> uh, most recently, Mitt Romney was forced to confront the White Horse prophecy during the course of his own failed presidential campaign. A November 2006 Wall Street Journal article, quote, White, Ho White Horse in the White House, suggested that some Latter-day Saints saw in Mitt Romney, quote, the potential to fulfill a 160-year-old uh, premonition by Mormon founder Joseph Smith known as the White Horse Prophecy. And the New York Times noted that Romney had been questioned about a mysterious saying attributed to Joseph Smith Jr. called the White House Prophecy. When pressed concerning his own views, Romney discounted the prophecy, arguing, I haven't heard my name associated with it or anything of that nature, adding that it is not official church doctrine. There are a lot of things that are speculation and discussion by church members and even church leaders that aren't official church doctrine. Then he concludes with this. I don't put that at the heart of my religious belief. This did not stop observers from asking the question, is Romney the stuff of Mormon legend? In June 2007, backers of rival Republican candidate Rudy, the godfather Giuliani, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't help it, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> sought to uh, tie Romney to the disavowed a uh, Mormon prophecy of a white horse, suggesting that underlying his candidacy was a fundamental desire to save the Constitution. Giuliani's deputy campaign director, Katie Harbath, hoped that the story and its, quote, Romney as a fulfiller of Mormon prophecy angle would receive wide, wide play. In response, Romney campaign spokesman Kevin Madden denounced Harbeth's action as, quote, an effort to question Governor Romney's faith. In conclusion, George Kobabe, in his 2004 fair essay, The White Horse Prophecy, sought to discount the, 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 the prophecy by stating the following. I don't think the white horse prophecy is fair to bring up at all. It has been rejected by every church leader that has talked about it. It is nothing to do with anything. That's quoting George. But I would, however, take a, a little bit of an issue with uh, George's statement. Given the persistence with which the white horse prophecy came up, not only during Matt, Mitt Romney's presidential campaign, and I predict that it would ultimately come up again and again and again if Romney were fortunate enough to be selected as John McCain's vice presidential uh, running mate. And I also suggest that uh, the, the prophecy continues to have legs because of the persistence which, which it has been referred to uh, by uh, reference and referred to by many, many rank-and-file Latter-day Saints right down to the present. Thank you. I guess uh, we got some questions uh, that uh, people, I, I, I guess you submitted them in writing. I don't know if there's anybody who's got any questions or I just sort of stunned everybody. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. 
see how much time do we have? How much time do I take? I guess it was, uh, oh, it's about quarter 